We're here today in Crow Park to talk about the next series of initiatives that we're going to do to make sure that we do the best job possible in terms of commemorating what happened at Crow Park on that fateful bloody Sunday in 1920. What we want to do is focus on the victims, focus on the 14 lives lost and make sure that they are appropriately remembered and respected. Something that hasn't always happened down through the years, down through the history books. There's been a lot of focus on numbers and facts and statistics. The real story of this is a human story and behind the history and the headlines there's a human tragedy and a human story that we want to tell. To enable us to do this we've been working very closely with the author and journalist Michael Foley. His book The Bloody Field has been uh, a guiding light for us in our work on this project and that has enabled us to go and commission a series of special films to focus on each of the 14 victims. It has been set to a specially commissioned piece of music by the renowned Colin McEnumra which is an outstanding piece of work and we'll be releasing them over the next 10 weeks on our own website. In addition to this, we have a podcast, an eight-series podcast that talks about the events in Ireland of 1920, the build-up to what happened here at Crook Park on Bloody Sunday, the appalling tragedy that unfolded on the field and what happened afterwards. It's been extraordinary work, really, and I mean, a huge amount of credit goes to a lot of people. I mean, in particular, Kean Murphy in, in the GA Press Office has been, has been a gigantic drive behind this. Um, and his passion and his imagination and his willingness and his his determination to get things done has been a huge part of this, especially, I suppose, in the year we've had, where, you know, at the start of the year, there would have been particular plans for the Bloody Sunday commemorations, and obviously that's all been compromised by, by COVID-19 and lockdown and so on. But, you know, as it stands now, on the 21st of November, there will be a commemoration here. The people will not be forgotten. Their memory will be cherished and curated from here on out. Um, we have the Bloody Sunday podcast. Um, there'll be a TV documentary later on in the year as well. The Abbey Theatre are doing 14 one one person plays about the 14 victims. Um, there's just a, it's 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 amazing really to think, you know, the vast variety of of ways now we can we can access the Bloody Sunday story that maybe mightn't have been there a bunch of years ago. Um, I think it's, it's, it's just fantastic that there are so many outlets now for people to engage with this story and I think if people do engage with it they'll find an awful lot of things that connect them to the story even though they might go into it thinking what is this to do with me this is, there is no connection between me and something that happened 100 years ago I think for anybody who connects with this story in some way they'll find something in it Hi my name is Barry John Kinsler and I'm playing Michael Hogan in the Bloody Sunday project. It's funny because it, it, it's, uh, I remember when I auditioned for it, it meant a lot to me because of the cultural weight and the cultural significance of not just Bloody Sunday, but everything leading up to Bloody Sunday and everything that happened after Bloody Sunday. So it wasn't one of those things where you usually do a project and you're delighted to do it. It, it, it felt really important to do as opposed to something that made me happy because it, it was obviously wonderful to be part of it, but. It's just, um, just as an Irish person and, and somebody who grew up playing Gaelic football, it was necessary, it was needed, as opposed to something I wanted to do. It's Michelle Cullamach and Um Here where I'm Kaolas Grieved on the Tugra show. I, I was asked to write some music to accompany, uh, just to, to commemorate the, the events here a uh, hundred years ago, um, which is a huge, um, honour to be asked to do so and uh, responsibility also I suppose um, uh, I t Bloody Sunday is something that I had a connection with, my grandfather a Leitrim man uh, was um, due to he, he had a ticket for the game apparently and um, he decided not to come he had been out that morning um, in, in, in Dublin um, he was part of the IRA and um, He's a medical student, he was a medical orderly on the day and um, so the, 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 the day, it was the only day that he spoke of, um, he was tight-lipped about uh, that time, um, so the, you know, it was kind of like a, there were strong feelings and um, a sense of responsibility and um, just to, to also, also the, my sense of the my sense of the music for the, the 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 event, I was kind of keen from the outset not to um, for it not to be a lament, uh, for not to be a kind of an ochon, um, but for it to be something that would be uplifting and, in a way, kind of a way of restoring the people who passed away their dignity to them. So. 
that was kind of what I set out to do. Um, yeah. I think the impact on the GA has been very has been very subtle because I mean in 1920 they they really didn't talk about it. It wasn't mentioned. The connection with the families kind of drifted apart. It just drifted away. They had commemorative games here for years between Dublin and Tipperary, and obviously the naming of the Hogan Stand was a direct reference to Bloody Sunday. But I think the fact that we can reopen the story now, we can really look at how it did impact on the GA. And I, and I do think that there was a certain form of grieving almost that the GA didn't go through at the time. It's what we, in the 21st century, I suppose, we'd nearly call it post-traumatic stress disorder. They just, they just buried it away. But things like the Bloody Sunday Grave Projects and the erecting of the gravestones and the connections with the families and the reconnecting with some families who had drifted from the GA because of what had happened at Crow Park and because of the fact that there wasn't any contact. All of those kind of things are cathartic, I think, both for the organisation and for the people involved as well, for the families involved. It's a two-way street. Um, and I think for the GA, I mean, when, you, when you're here, I mean, I find it, and obviously maybe I'm different because I've been looking at this thing for a long, long time, but I mean, you can feel the energy in Crow Park. I mean, there is an energy in Crow Park anyway for everything that goes on here between games and the history of the place. But Bloody Sunday is in there. It's not like, it's, it's not a conscious thing, but it's there. And I think when you stand, particularly on a day like this when it's here and it's quiet and there's no one around and you start to look around and you know where people would have fallen, you know that the police would have come in from that side and, you know, the stands and everything can, can melt away and you can actually feel, get some sense of what it might have been like a hundred years ago. I mean, stadiums carry memories. So this stadium will, will always carry the memory of, Crow Park, of Bloody Sunday in 1920 as well.